Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. It's Saturday morning, and this is a very special episode of the Weekend Workshop. This episode will actually be episode 46 of the Workshop Podcast. And this week, we are going to look back over the year that was 2021, and we are going to talk about the top 10 highlights from the workshop in this community in the past 12 months. So let's dive right in. So real quick, guys, um, I have, uh, if you, most of you, I am sure, know Nicole Sauce from Living Free in Tennessee. And uh, a friend of hers, somebody from her community, uh, Jenny Hill, always talked about doing the word of the year. So a couple of years ago, I adopted that. So the first year that I started creating content, my word of the year was grow. The idea was to grow something special. And it did, you know, it, it came along. It didn't, it came very, very close to my goals for that year, but I was blown away by how much growth I had. And so the next year, this year, 2021, I decided my word of the year was going to be build. And the idea behind that was that I grew something great in 2020. And this year I wanted to build on top of that and build. We did. The workshop blew up, it found its name, it found its niche, it found its uh, community. And of course, it's because of you guys. And that makes me happy and proud and excited beyond belief. So I thought, let's talk about all the great things that came out of 2021's Word of the Year build. And these are none of these are in any particular order. I'm just going to go through all 10 of them. It's like trying to pick your favorite child. You can't do it. So I just made a list of 10, all in random order. And let's dive in and talk about them. I hope you guys think back to some of these cool times that have happened, some of the neat things that have happened. And yeah, we look back on fondness. And I haven't really picked a word of the year for 2022 yet. Uh, I don't want to use build again, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure what it'll be yet, but we are heading into some great things for 2022. But before we do that, because I love top 10 lists and lists in general. I want to look back over what was 2021. So the first item, uh, we'll, we'll just number them one through 10, doesn't put them in importance or not. But item number one was I set a goal to appear on five different podcasts over the 12 months. And I did it. Barely, but I made it. And it was exciting. And I'm not sure, looking back, I want to say uh, the first one again was uh, Nicole Sauce is living free in Tennessee. I went on there and talked about becoming a content creator in 2021 and how it is absolutely still possible. And honestly, I look back and I thank Nicole. She celebrated her 500th episode of her podcast this year. That was exciting, but she's the one who really launched my content creation. It'll be two years ago. So February, 2022 will be two years ago from then that she had me on as a guest. And I launched my growing or, or yeah, starting a handyman business with little or no money series. And that's what launched everything that I do now. The, the channel's gone through two or three incarnations since then. But honestly, it was Nicole. And funny story, I was originally supposed to be on her show in November of 2019. And I got nervous and chickened out. And things got busy, blah, blah, blah. And so we give it another shot in February of 2020. And that is where I really call the official launch of the channel. That's where all my stats that from February, 2020 onward go. If you look back the channel was established in 2019 with some little how-to videos, they were kind of fun, more promoting my business, but thanks to Nicole, she's the one that really helped me launch this. Uh, second appearance, this is all under number one. I was on the survival podcast with Jack again, of course. Uh, you guys hear me a lot on the Thursday expert council sessions, but this was an actual full-on episode where I got to go on and chat with Jack again. And again, I talked about becoming a content creator in 2021. And then uh, one that came right out of the blue, and this was where I felt like I was finally starting to jump outside of just kind of my little community. You know, I, uh, LFTN, Living Free in Tennessee, and TSP, they're all the part of the TSP community. And, you know, I was in with them and that kind of stuff. But uh, James from the Blackbird podcast. If you haven't listened to him, he's an awesome uh, anarchist. He has some really cool guests on there. 
he messaged me. This was really the first time that someone had reached out to me to be on a podcast that made me feel really good. He is also an extended member of the TSP community, but uh, it was just, it, it felt really good to have that. that I, I knew I was heading in the right direction and build was coming up. And he had me on there to really talk about developing a handyman toolbox. The tools that somebody who isn't handy, who doesn't do any work for themselves, typically needed to have on hand. And that was an awesome interview. I thank James uh, for having me on there. I loved it. And then, uh, then beyond that was another one, a friend of a friend who runs the Atlantis Gazette on Instagram had me on there talking about, again, uh, home repair and preparedness and tools. And that was a really cool Instagram live interview. I had a ball doing that. That was a lot of fun. I even put it out on the podcast later on. And that was great. And then, honestly, the biggest build of the year uh, was my appearance on PBN Live. And that was the first time that someone completely unattached to the TSP community reached out to me and said, hey, I'd love for you to be on our show. And at the moment, I didn't even know who Prepper Broadcast Network was. But boy, has that turned into something great. James had me on there. I just, oh, it's been awesome. Anyway, a little more about that down the road. <laughs> Uh, further on. Number two, and this one was uh, a personal one for me, but it was having Becky, my wife, on the live stream with me. I love spending time with my wife. I love my wife to death. And to be able to get her comfortably involved in my content creation was incredible because there's so much her and I have prepped together for, you know, our entire married lives, uh, be sometimes before we called it prepping and then other times after we did call it, but we were always into preparedness and she is a wealth of information and I loved, I've had her on for two episodes so far. I'd love to have her on on a weekly basis, but there's so many interviews and things on the go that I might have to go to a third live stream and I'm not ready to do that yet, but we will have uh, my, my beautiful uh, better half back on again. But to me, one of the highlights of the year was absolutely being able to create content with my wife and there'll be more of it. Uh, number three, the collab video. And this was when I really took a chance back in April of 2021 this year, I reached out to a ton of different creators. I want to say it was eight different ones. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know, every single creator I reached out to said, sure, Tim, I'd love to. And we put together a really cool two tool time collaboration. I'm sure I'll do another one coming up this year where I had eight different content creators do a two or three minute video on a tool they couldn't live without. It was so much fun. It, it just kind of invigorated me. And I know that it brought other people from other communities in, but it was, a it was just a lot of fun to interact. This was the real first collaboration I did with fellow content creators. And if you are a content creator out there, collaborate, reach out to me, reach out to other creators and collaborate because it is so much fun and it's rewarding. And when you're done, you have a project you can look back on and say, I put that together with a little help from all my friends. So yes, I love doing the tool time collab video. Uh, number four, uh, Jan uh, July 2nd, I launched my brand new studio space. So before that, if you look back on my videos, they were just shot in my workshop with whatever mess was on my bench behind me. The lighting was okay. The color was bad. You could see all my VCRs stacked up on a shelf, whatever it happened to be. And we were in uh, lockdown, not lockdown, but we ended up having to stay home for a while because our, you know, certain favorite thing went through the family and we all had to quarantine for a few days. And so I made the best of it. I painted my fence and my deck and I, uh, I worked, uh, put together a shed. And then one of the last days I had a rainy day and I tore everything out of the corner of my shop and I put together what is the workshop. Now the nice black with the, the signs and the led lights and the DeWalt tools. And to me, that was a huge step up. we I was building something special for you guys, something that you could enjoy looking at, something you can enjoy listening to. I put in some new lighting and I really didn't spend a lot. It was close to one of my free projects, as I like to call it, a zero project, uh, because I used paint I had on hand. I used boards I had on hand, shelf brackets I had on hand. The only thing I had to buy was the actual signage that I mounted behind me. But to me, 
that was one of my personal highlights of the year was the new studio space early July. It really kicked this content up a notch. And, you know, I'm always making small changes. So look for a few new ones. You guys have already noticed a few, I'm sure. And there'll be a few more coming. Uh, number one, two, three, four, number five. And that was hitting a thousand subscribers slash 4,000 watch hours. And I set a goal from February of 2020 that in 12 months I would be monetized as a channel. I didn't quite hit it. Uh, it was actually on my birthday uh, that I hit a thousand subscribers, March 26, 2020. So I was 13 months to the day that I got my first thousand subscribers. It was about a month later that I hit 4,000 watch hours. And then I was finally able uh, to really start making a decent amount of money from my YouTube channel. I was already starting to make a little bit from my Amazon affiliate sales, but this is when I was able to start running ads and it kind of doubled what little bit of income I was making. And that was a huge goal for me. And then of course I decided to make a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I set a goal of hitting 5,000 subs at year number two. We probably aren't going to make it. I'm guessing we'll end up around 3,500 for now, unless a video or something really blows up. But you know what? Having goals forces you to build toward them. And that leads into my next goal and or my next big event of the year. And that was hitting 2,500 subs, 2,500. That's a big number to me. That was huge. I look back on some of my celebration videos and like my hundred subscriber celebration. I was, you know, it's almost humbling to look back. It was funny. And it happened so fast, just over a year between a hundred and 2,500, about a year and a half, maybe. Uh, and I took the time and I told my story again, because there were so many new people involved in the workshop community that were coming in through so many different channels. I thought it was time for me to sit down and tell my story. And I enjoyed it. I really did. And, but 2,500 to me was a huge, huge milestone. By the time this plays, we'll be getting damn close. I think right now we're at 2,825. So my goal is to hit 3,000 before uh, the clock ro rolls over to, or the calendar rolls over to 2022. And damn it, we're going to make it, or we're going to be really, really close. Uh, the next highlight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, number seven in no particular order. And that was joining Prepper Broadcast Network, better known as PBN. And if you guys haven't checked them out, they're friggin' incredible. I didn't know I didn't know they existed before they contacted me. And I'm like, how did I not know you guys were here? This is an entire community based around prepping content creators. And there's like a dozen content creators on there. I got on for Preppers Live on Monday night with James and we hit it off and he approached me about doing some more content. And I went back and I planned and I thought about it. And I came back to him a couple of weeks later and I decided to, to launch my second weekly live stream still under the workshop podcast banner, but as the Thursday night repairedness series and this repairedness branding to me, I, it, it's huge. I, I'm going to turn it into so many cool things and thank you guys for supporting me and being on PBN, my Thursday night episode, uh, ha, you know, five fold increase in viewership just by being on PBN. That was huge. And thanks James for that. This, I don't want to pick a highlight of the year, but that's pretty damn close. And then reaching back further than that, number eight was launching the actual podcast. And you guys know I'm big into uh, investing in systems. And when I first started the podcast, all it was, was an audio transcription or an audio version of all my weekly content. So I would just strip the audio from all four or five videos I did that week. And then I would end up turning that into a podcast. I recorded a, a generic intro outro and it worked and it was a way to start building a podcast without it requiring a whole lot of extra work. You know, I spent a good solid couple of days putting together the systems and learning the programs to make the podcast. I knew what I needed and then I just had to go out and find it and learn how to do it. And when I did that, I had a system in place and it took me literally five minutes to 15 minutes to create my podcast every single week. But I always had bigger aspirations on what the podcast was going to become because I love talking if you didn't notice that. And number nine was my first live stream. If you look back on the goofy thumbnail, although I think that might be deleted now, <laughs> the first 15 minute live stream, I did it with my phone out in the shop 
and I don't know if it was that one. I had one early on where my microphone died. The quality was bad, but you know what? I shared a meme the other day that said, um, <laughs> be brave enough to suck at something in order to get good at it. And that is exactly what I did with my live streaming. I knew, and I was okay with it. I knew I was going to suck, whatever. I knew I was going to be horrible the first time, the second time, the third time. But you know what? Every single time I did it, I got better and better and better. And eventually I decided I need a workspace. And so here I am in my office, in the basement of my house. I have hardwired internet here. I have a black drop uh, cloth behind me. I have a daylight bulb above me. And I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. And this live stream has just invigorated me. I look forward to my, you know, hour to hour and a half, twice a week, where I get to sit down and interact with you guys and share what thoughts are on my brain, talk about home maintenance and repairedness, interview some, inc I couldn't even pick my favorite interview of the year, there was too many of them. But you know, once a week now, it's been having somebody really cool on to interview to talk about something that I don't know enough about that I need to share with you guys. And of course, the live stream then turned into two episodes a week of my podcast. So then I've got two live episodes and a recorded episode on Saturday. And I just love, love doing these live streams. So thank you guys. And we're going to keep growing it into something huge. We just tied for the most concurrent viewers on a live stream and we're heading up, up, up and we're building. And that's going to be one of the highlights of 2022 is how big these live streams get. And this one is number 10. It's not the least, it's not the best, but man, didn't I love doing these community member spotlights this year. And to me, this is what really got me going. I love collaborating and you guys will see that I've got, uh, I'm going to become part of a really cool collaboration project in 2022. Not going to get into it yet because it's still a secret. Uh, you could say there's a, a little bit of fire brewing in the background. That's all I can say, but it's going to be friggin' awesome. But leading up to that, of course, I talked about my collab video I did in April, but what I liked even more than that was having some really cool content creators and community members come on the first Monday of every month to tell me or to share with you guys a tool they can't live without, something about their community, who they are, what they create, and I just love it. And I'm sure I'm going to forget somebody, but... I had Ryan Collette on first. It kind of spun out of him uh, being thankful for winning the summer barbecue contest giveaway. And so he he did a review of the barbecue brush. And from there, I know I'm going to forget people, but I had Brian from the Lots Project, Amy Dingman from A Farmer's Kind of Life, Jake from Ravenwood Acres, and two or three more. And I absolutely apologize for forgetting some of you guys. I'm so bad with names at the best of times, but these community member spotlights to me were again, one of the highlights. And I don't know if you guys notice, but the things that I get the most excited about are the community interaction. It's where I actually get to, you know, interact with one or more of you guys on a regular basis. And I love it because this is what I do it for. I love to teach. I love to learn and I love to make friends. And this has been a hell of a year and 2022 is going to just be even bigger. Maybe I'll switch back to grow because I've built some really cool things in 2021 and frig, I'm just going to grow. And uh, we're just, you know, and I took some chances this year and that's okay. Like I, you know, I started sometimes if you stick with what you've done all the time, you're never going to get up from where you are. And I did something like 70 straight episodes without missing a Friday of my growing your handyman business. But the channel was heading in a different direction. And I liked doing those videos, but I wasn't seeing the return that I wanted. And it wasn't growing into what I needed this channel to be, what I wanted this channel to be. And I knew we were heading more toward, you know, a backup power and prepping and independent living with a bend toward home maintenance. And that is my niche. And that's where I wanted to head. And part of that was taking a huge chance and I'm not lying. It, it really did scare me was taking a chance and starting a Sunday night live stream while at the same time moving away from my Friday growing your handyman business. And that was big. And don't be afraid to take chances guys, because that's what lets us grow and build and have success. And you know what? That's still there. That, that, huge treasure trove of 70 some episodes on a playlist and I still get some viewers from it and people love watching it, but that wasn't what this channel was going to be, but that's what started this channel. And that's what was cool, but don't be afraid to move on from things a bit. And then 
I dropped my money making minute Monday videos in favor of my Thursday night preparedness live streams because I love doing these live streams. Now you get three pieces of pre-recorded content and two live streams a week. And it's awesome. I love it. Don't be afraid to take chances, guys. I've done it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably in a good position because I also, you know, I make money from my handyman business, but this is my baby and I'm building this and I want it to be something huge. And I want you guys to come along for the ride. And I want to say friggin' thank you. I wanted to swear there, but you know what? Let's leave this G rated for today. If it wasn't for you guys in the workshop community, I wouldn't still be here. I wouldn't be in my basement talking to myself or actually talking to you guys. You know, this is, this is where I started uh, February of 2020. So two years ago, sitting here with my iPhone 10, leaned up against a post, talking to myself with that, that old bearded guy, just mumbling to himself, talking about, and you know what? I'm proud of that video. But look where I've come and look where this channel has gone, but only because you guys are along with me. So thank you guys. I don't know what else to say. I want you to know that I love you, that I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys who come out and subscribe and interact in the community. And if you have any ideas of how to make this place, the workshop, even better, I would love to hear. So thank you guys. Where else can I go from here? I can't. So let's leave it there. As always. Stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.